this is Zach Neese. And this is Walker Beach. We wrote Alabaster Jar. I started writing this song. Actually, it took me about three years to write this song, but I originally started writing the song because I wanted to give the congregation an opportunity to vocalize true worship to God. Romans 12.1 worship, which Romans 12.1 says, Therefore, brothers, in view of God's mercy, I urge you to present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to the Lord. This is your acceptable act of worship. So I wanted to help people worship God in a way that they don't just sing about, that they're living worship. So I wrote the first version, and the only thing that was good about it was the chorus. <laughs> Actually, that's a stretch. The uh, <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> no, I remember the first time I heard it. I was we were actually at Christ for the Nations, and Zach came in and played it for uh, for Klaus Kuhn and I. We heard the song, we heard the verse, and you know the first time we heard some of the lyrics, some of the imagery was just amazing. But at the same time, there felt like there was a disconnect between the verse and the chorus. And if I remember right, the chorus developed a little bit over time. It yeah. wasn't. It, I only had. Well, all it was, the chorus here, was the same. It was "Here I Am, Take Me." Here I Am, Take Me. Wasn't it straight? Oh, you're right. Okay. So yeah, it was. So it, it was in its. It was in its basic form. But one thing that's interesting is we were really tempted to record it as is because the verse was so strong. But at the same time, it just didn't feel like the song was done yet. Even though it was far better than a lot of other songs at the time, that doesn't justify going ahead and, and kind of pulling a song out of its uh, incubator early. It was verse two-less. We needed another verse, and I was, you know, I felt like the first verse, to me, was so complete in and of itself, I didn't know how to communicate a second verse, and so he challenged me to write a parallel verse. So what's a parallel verse, Walker? Parallel verse is where you take some of the elements from the first one and you just modify them, so rather than talking about the alabaster jar, now you're talking about my time is all I have a worth or my days. I said, hey, what about something about our life or whatever? At this point, mm -hmm. I was still just kind of encouraging him. So the first verse was more metaphorical than the second verse. The second verse actually took the metaphorical image of our lives being an alabaster jar and put it into more specific words. Here's my strength, here's everything, my time, everything I have right. to offer you. Through the course of a lot of evenings and specifically some recording sessions where we were working on it, Zach would come over to my house and we'd work on the song and usually it was, no, it's not done yet, no, it's not done. And he would go and he'd write and come back a little bit and no, it's not done. And so finally we realized that we really had to have this connection between the verse and the chorus. Normally I'm a fan for cutting a pre-chorus or cutting a channel because it's just belaboring getting to a chorus that by itself is sufficient. And the chorus was very good, it just felt like it needed something. And that's where my writing part came in, my whopper part. Just to clarify, I wrote an extremely small portion of this song. I wrote the melody to the pre-chorus. So if anybody says, hey, you wrote a great song, I very humbly say, thank you. No, I'm <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> anyway, we wrote that part, and Zach actually didn't like it at first, um, but, but it grew on him. right. It's good. It worked. You know what I like about that? Mm -hmm. That the melody, together with the lyrics, that's the part of the song that says, I remember your sacrifice, so I'm offering my sacrifice. Right. It's your the sacrifice of your life, so I'm going to live my life in sacrifice. It's the reason and response kind of thing. It gave you an opportunity and gave you a segue. And that's, it was really more than a melodic thing, which it didn't hurt to have there be a lift and in going into the chorus, but it also gave a chance for lyrics to be put in place to help connect the song. <laughs> which was great, because that's where the bridge came out of. Yep. And actually, I remember the day I heard it, Zach called and left a message on my voicemail with his wife singing in the background, Jen was singing in the background. He said, okay, so I'm going to sing the chorus, and he's singing it and playing it, and she's singing in the background, worthy, worthy, you are worthy. I heard it like, yeah, that's cool. And so anyway, that kind of stuck, and everybody loved it, and we played it sometimes during some worship services. And I think we just did the bridge first quite a few times. There was different services where it just came up, it became sort of an anthem, even without the song being introduced yet. And now we're in the after part of the song, which is always one of our favorite parts to do. We've just felt like this song needed to breathe, and especially in this time of worship, 
One note about the DVD, the timeline that you're seeing, other than cutting a few seconds in between songs just to keep the flow, you know, uh, a hair faster so there's not a disengage. This is actually the way we recorded it that night. Every song is done in its order, exactly how it was done that night. So at this point in the night, this was a place to let it breathe and let the congregation respond. And especially if you listen in surround sound, this is one of my favorite parts of the night for the DVD is when the congregation is just they're lifting up that anthem worthy worthy uh you are worthy worthy is the lord it's really amazing and the reason why i mentioned surround sound is because that's what we experienced that night we were there in the middle lifting up our voice and hearing the congregation around us and it really is quite something to be there and i wish i could fit more into the two speakers or five speakers however many you have in your house but to be there and to, to be a part of that worship experience was absolutely amazing one of the greatest worship experiences in my life so you can listen to it right now When you come into a moment with God, there are really very few things, there are very few words to describe the beauty and the elegance and the majesty, the worthiness and the holiness of our Lord. And really this is enough. Is He worthy of my passions? Is He worthy of my heart? Is He worthy of every ounce of my strength? Is He worthy of the paths of my life? Is He worthy of all I have? He is. He's more than worthy.